Welcome to the Video Dictionary, where we explore the language and words we use every day. If you're into history and language, subscribe and click the little bell so you never miss a word. And let's just jump right into it. Media. Noun. Television, newspaper, radio, web pages, or any system or apparatus that organizes, selects, and delivers news and information to the public. History and etymology. The word media is the plural form of the word medium. Any single channel where you receive information could be referred to as a medium. A single channel where you receive information could be referred to as a medium. This is the same word you see when you're buying a t-shirt and you're seeing the size in between small or large. It's also the same word that we use to refer to someone sitting at the end of a table during a seance, claiming to speak for the spirits. A medium is something that goes in between, in between the sizes of small and large, in between people, air, is also a medium, or between the living realm and the spirit realm. But in the definition that we're looking at today, it's what goes between the public and current events, or the news. Going back to the 1590s, the word medium came initially to refer to a substance that a force can be transmitted through. This definition includes air. Like I mentioned before, we use that to speak. We're forcing the energy through the air. So air was one of the first mediums of communication to receive that title of media. By 1795, the meaning had expanded to print publications and with many other publications available, the plural media became applied to the industry in general. And with the introduction of radio, television, and even the internet, this broadcasting to the masses became what we referred to as mass media. It's mass produced, it's mass manufactured, and it's mass consumed. Prescription and commentary. We've all come to add all sorts of prefixes to the word media these days. Mass media, social media, alternative media. All of these differentiate between who created the content, who's receiving the content, and what the content consists of. Like, social media is primarily the users creating content for their friends and family to enjoy. In the case of Facebook, that's what the purpose is there. For Twitter, it seems to be a place where journalists can talk to each other. So it's kind of like Facebook for journalists. And as I mentioned before, mass media is the mass production and the mass consumption of news and stories that we've come to know as the media these days. I kind of want to throw out another concept. I don't know exactly what I should call it, but micromedia sounds like it might work, and it's just another function of social media, but I think it's uh, an idea that needs to be tossed around a little bit. It's the idea that there's smaller channels producing smaller amounts of content that you can pick and choose from. So, for example, I watch Tim Pool and Sticks Hexenhammer because they cover politics and media issues, and I'm interested in those topics, and I watch Paul Vanderclay because he talks about Christianity and Jordan Peterson, also topics I'm interested in. And then there's Tom Woods and Michael Malice because they talk about libertarianism and anarchism. And Steven Crowder I just find funny, but these people don't work with each other on a regular basis. They don't have these massive organizations behind them constantly churning out media. Well, Tom Woods might be constantly churning out media, but it's not the same. <laughs> I could go on and on with how granular I could get with these different channels that I've chosen to consume. And this is something very different from mass media. It has its pros and cons. With this type of media, you can fill yourself in with a bubble and only ever hear stuff that agrees with you. But if you partake of this type of media responsibly and listen to people you disagree with a lot of times. Like, I don't always agree with Tim Pool politically or Paul Vander Clay politically. I still appreciate what they have to say and I can learn 
a lot from people I disagree with. I think this whole new paradigm of micromedia and selecting places where you get your media from is a much healthier way to consume media. It makes you responsible for the information you hear. It makes you responsible for finding out what the other side believes and what other people that disagree with you believe. And in this new paradigm, you're not being fed selective information like you would get from a Fox News or a CNN. You have to figure out the information yourself, and you're still going to get opinions you disagree with, like I mentioned before from the people I follow. And I hope that to some extent, I can become one of these micromedia channels that you follow. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video or feel like you've learned something, please leave a like and share the video with a friend who you think might find it interesting. Make sure you subscribe on both BitChute and YouTube, and follow me on social media, both Alt Tech and the big corporate social media giants. Find the links in the description below. If you'd like to help support my channel or this project, you can find links to my Subscribestar, Patreon, PayPal, and even a Bitcoin wallet in the description below as well. Again, thank you for watching, and until next time, keep on learning.